This is 10 Minutes with the Wood Sandstorm. We're live from the Hilton Riyadh. It's the eve of the Grand Finals of MSC 2024 at the Esports World Cup. And you've seen this gentleman on your screens from every single day of the group stage into the knockouts. And you must be wondering, who is this handsome gentleman? Where is he from? Oh, What's he all it. about? Besides asking various Filipino players to teach him <laughs> a new word, because that's going viral. How are you, dude? Thanks for taking the time to uh, talk to us. Of course. Honestly, I'm very, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'm glad I could have this opportunity also to kind of get to know you a little bit more as well. We'll see if that comes up. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, it's mainly me asking the questions okay. and us talking about you. Okay. Uh, speaking of, uh, you're not a stranger to MLBB Esports. No. Uh, this is not your first rodeo, so to yeah. speak. Uh, where have we seen you possibly prior to this big event? Uh, so when it comes to Mobile Legends specifically, I want to say I worked two seasons of MPL. So I worked the MPL Mina Fall Split Finals, I believe, in Riyadh last year. And I also worked in, I want to say like the MPL split a couple of weeks ago here when we had Falcons and Twisted make it to the uh, M, uh, MSC. So that's about a good year into yeah. the uh, MLBB Esports shtick. And uh, how was that for you? Uh, we, we, all were, we always were just observers, right? Yeah. Very few of us actually partook in MPL, man. I mean, it always seemed like such a long ways away since this is, you know, the other half of the world for yeah. us. Uh, most of my fans are from Southeast Asia uh, and even maybe North America. So again, this is this is all very new. How is yeah. MPL Mena doing? Um, I, I want to say it's doing well enough at the moment. Like it's still growing. Like you're talking about what it's fifth season when it comes to three years. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, like it's not that much when you look at other regions like Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore. You're talking about regions who've been around for maybe four, five, six years. Half a, more than half a decade. Yeah, yeah. it's like what thirteen seasons that they've been doing so far. So. It's kind of expected for a region that's still growing to not perform as well as regions that have had world champions and multiple time world champions. That's the competitive side of things. That is yeah. performance wise. But getting into esports, how did that happen? How, how, how did you end up working in MPL Mena? How oh. did you end up getting to know a lot of the people here working for uh, esports World Cup? Um, okay, so I want to say how I started as a, like, as a talent in general. Yeah. This would go back all the way to like 2017, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Dublin, Ireland around 2014, started studying uh, college over there. Mm -hmm. And you know, I didn't really know anyone. I was just moving there on my own. And just by yourself? Yep. So how- Your family? It was my uncle from my mother's side that I stayed with for like a couple of months. Okay. And then I just, like, I just went off on my own, I guess, at that point. Okay. Uh, so I was What'd studying computer science. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, I want to say the, you, the extent of my degree is telling people to just turn things off and on again. And plug in or plug in it? Yep. 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 Leave four it. years. Four years of college. Leave and that's it what I got. 30 seconds and then let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Sometimes maybe give it a little smack and it works and there you go. That's my degree. Yep. <laughs> That kind of sums it up. Uh, but yeah, so I was studying there and I didn't really know anyone. I was playing a lot of League of Legends back then. Uh -huh. And I kind of saw like there were some local tournaments happening. So I was like, okay, this might be a way to kind of get to know people. So I started uh, working as a, like I went as a viewer once or twice. Started working as a volunteer for the event. And then one time they started saying like, hey, we're looking for casters. So I was like, you know what? That sounds like fun. So I'm gonna give that a try. So I worked as a commentator in English for League of Legends for for a while, like in the local Irish scene. And then I decided, you know what, it might be a good idea to kind of expand into other games. PUBG PC was one of the first ones that I got into as well. I worked on that on the, I want to say like the collegiate level in the UK. That was a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that is a thing. Yeah, uh, it was a company called The Newell, if you guys look it up. So like they had the collegiate level tournaments for PUBG, League of Legends, and maybe one or two other games, but those two were the biggest ones. And, and you were doing this all throughout school, like you were, yeah. you were taking your degree. Yeah. So at that point, I was still like studying and like doing that in my free time. Like it wasn't paid or anything. It was just volunteer, uh, volunteering work. I and mean, precious experience too. Yeah, like that's the thing. I mean, at that point, we were all getting paid in exposure. So, <laughs> so that was the payment that we all received as talent early on in our careers. I think we all got that, like around that same time. Oh, I have like maybe two million exposure bucks right now. So like, I, like I'm about to peak. Um, so I worked with them for a while. And then I, I think my lucky break was when one of my co-casters tagged me in a tweet saying uh, there 
there was this agency called Code Red Agency. Code Red, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so Code Red Agency posted saying that, hey, we're looking for an Arabic talent. And at that point, I had never worked in Arabic, ever. And it's been like six, seven years where I haven't spoken to anyone in Arabic whatsoever. But you spoke Arabic yeah, growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, like I grew up uh, and I was able to speak Arabic and English, but I was so scared. I was literally starting to like Google words. Like, for example, like terrain words like mountain, hill. And I was like, okay, so this is actually what this word means and stuff like that. Because I was that worried. And also when it comes to Arabic, it's like you have kind of like a formal way of speaking and kind of like a... Conversational. Yes, yeah, conversational. Yeah. So I was like, do people, like, am I supposed to commentate with the formal or the conversational? I didn't really know. Commentate? Yeah. Wow, okay. So again, uh, just putting two and two together, when you're a commentator, when you're a caster, you just have... 10 times, 15 times more words per minute yes. compared to a host because you yes. just have a script. Well, you're, what you're doing now, but when you're a caster and you're starting to prep for work in a certain language, I can only imagine, like, especially if you haven't spoken Arabic in, what would you say, five, six years? Yep. So like, at that point, I barely spoke Arabic to anyone, and I was like, you know what, Like, I, I want to give this a try. Did you end up having an accent? Uh, honestly, no. Like, I think, No one called it out? No, no, no. I think it was fine. So... What happened after that was I worked for literally just four days in that tournament. That was 2017, I believe, in Kiev, was in Ukraine. Lead? No, no, no. That was PUBG Mobile. So I went from PUBG PC for, for the Newell, which is like collegiate level stuff, to... Uh, in English? Yeah, in English, to casting in Arabic for... And the first tournament was called the Oppo Mina Challenger Cup. I see. And I worked with one of my... Uh, with Starfall. He was one of the first people I ever worked with in the Mina region. Starfall? Yes. At this time, were you then known as the Wood? Yes. Uh, sandstorm already. Yeah. So uh, I want to say, like, after I worked in Ireland on the local level of, for a while, I decided to like make a like make Twitter hand, make Twitter account, Instagram, everything from the from uh, from scratch. Yeah. And I ended up going with Sandstorm, just like you know the song. Uh, the, the artist, the Wood. Yeah. So the Wood, the Wood. Which close is enough. your actual name? The Wood, the Wood. That it's is my your, first name and my last name. Your legal name. Yes. So the Wood, the Wood. Your legal name. Yes. And was was it a click? Did you immediately just say, that's my name, Sandstorm? Yeah, I, I was like, you know what, it's close enough, so might as well give it a try. And it just kind of fit from there, so. Huh. You know what? I, I wish I had a cool enough story. <laughs> because people ask me about, where did Leo come from? Yeah. I wish Let me guess, were you, were you born in August? No. Are you a Leo? Star sign? No, okay. nothing. I was just curious. I, my, my love for cats came in, like, in the past five years. Okay. So, again, just my, my attachment to a lion was was nothing. Okay. Here's a story real quick. I worked in radio. See, I told you I'd get to know you. Because, again, <laughs> I, I can't match the wood sandstorm, so I'm going to tell the story of how pathetic the name is, right? I was working in radio. I was in, colli I was in college radio. Yeah. I was a trainee. And they were saying, all right, we can't let you go on air with your real name. My real name is Dan. Okay. Dan sounds like way too many other words. <laughs> so if you hear it, Dan, Stan, Can, Man. Yeah. It just, there's no recall. Yeah. So they said, think of a name. And then we'll go with that. Yeah. So I came up with a short list, and the short list had dumbass names like Spencer <laughs> and Dante. Dante would have been cool. No, but, but when you say it, and the way I said it when I was in my teens, did not fly. Okay. Wait, how did you say it in your teens? No, my four seven sounds good. Hey, what's up? It's Dante here. Okay. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, they just shut that I down. I still like Dante, though. My mentors were smart. My mentors <laughs> were on the right track to shut me down from saying that. And that's how I ended up with Leo. Okay. Because 10, 15 minutes before going live, they asked, hey, do you have a name? Like, no, Dante and Spencer are all I have. So, within the moments leading up, right, Leo. I like that. Let's go with that. We'll just go with Leo. Okay. So I, at the time, I didn't think radio or broadcast would be a long time thing. Yeah. I just wanted to try it, pick up what I can, go. Yeah. I don't know, I would be stuck with Leo 13, 14 years down the line. <laughs> I mean, for me, like, I want to say, like, in the MENA community, uh, I was called Sandstorm, but it somehow went from Sandstorm to Sandy and then Sand. People call you Sand? Yes. In the, in the MENA community, they mostly. You can't afford the extra syllable. No. Sandstorm. Yes. On desk, we call you always. Whenever I don't know if you noticed. Yeah, the wood sandstorm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you know, and I love that. I love the fact that I'm actually gonna call the wood sandstorm. It's amazing. I love that. So like, <laughs> please keep that up. I love it. So story time. After you worked uh, in uh, Kiev yeah. for the PUBG Mobile event as an Arabic talent, where yeah. did you go from there? So after that, that was 20. Uh, I want to say like 2018, actually 2018. Which is quite a boom in esports, I'd say. Yeah, that's, was, that's when it all kind of started. This was before the pandemic boom. Yes. Yeah. So. So and then I think I worked another event in English for Melania slash Pringles in English mm -hmm. with uh, Maxman in PUBG Mobile. And then I want to say like the start of COVID, 2020, mm -hmm. I had three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back events. Back-to-back. 
Um, and that was when I was also working a full-time job. So it was literally 49 days in a row of working 12 to 16 hours every single day. There was no stop. I was working like a full-time job, literally from... Um, Your day job was the cast. Uh, yeah, so I want to say like, nah, yeah, day job was, I want to say like from 3 p.m. until 6.30, I was working as a caster. And I was also doing the stream, so like we didn't really have production by, at that point. So, you were your own production. Yeah, so I was literally the one that was streaming. I was just giving graphics and like, go. Yeah. So I, I was the streamer for the event. I was commentating with uh, Cody uh, at that time as well. And after those three events... Uh, basically, the schedule was 3 p.m. until 6.30, and then 7 p.m. I'd go to my full-time job from 7 until 2 a.m., and then from 2 until 4, I would be working on, like, statistics for the event. Cause, Catching like, up, yeah. Yeah, because, like, there was no production. So, like, right. every day I would be posting the stats from oh, the not, previous day. Not just for you. For no, no, for the viewers. So I'd literally be posting, like, who had the most kills. And by the way... For the show, yeah. Yes, I literally would have to, like, scroll past each team to look at how many kills click, click. each... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would literally put it all in an Excel sheet by, like, one... Uh, space by one by hand yes it was it was ridiculous and I, I, like all that just so I can like give the community statistics that they would enjoy just so they can find out oh did their favorite player have the best performance type of thing so this is you getting reps and mad XP yes in PUBG Mobile grinding so yeah. PUBG Mobile sounds like you were working the scene three to four years yeah so I worked PUBG Mobile I want to say like 2020 2021 2022 it was just PUBG Mobile that I was working mm -hmm. and at that time I was also working full time jobs because working as a talent was not consistent enough to provide yeah so like it, you, you know the grind it's it, full time job plus talent yeah. plus whatever you can get your hands the on the hustle is real yep. uh, it gets grindy sometimes and again sometimes it goes back to back to back yeah and there's like no social life yeah so I wouldn't see my friends for like weeks on end because I'm just working sometimes Esports winner. Yep. You're just so I get it. All right. So come 2022, 2023, what was the bridge between you and MPL Mena? Um, so I want to say what happened was 2023. You had uh, I worked for Fortnite as a desk. I want to say 2022 was the last time I kind of worked as a commentator, mm -hmm. and I made the switch uh, the switch to desk hosting how, around 2023. How that happened? Why? Um, I want to say PUBG Mobile Global Championship 2022. That was the last event I actually commentated. Um, and I kind of felt like the... BMGC is big. BMGC yeah. is big, yeah. And I kind of felt like the region was more accepting of a different style of casting. And I felt like I've kind of peaked mm. as a commentator. So I was like, okay, what's the next thing that I can do? What's the next goal that I can achieve? And so I was this like, you was, know what? This was your initiative. Yeah. Okay. I was like, you know what? Desk hosting could be a, a fun idea because because of my character, because of my... Like, I want to say like the way I handle myself, the kind of jokes I would crack and the way I could kind of control the conversation it just seemed like the the natural, logical yeah, yeah the, the natural, natural yeah. logical next move so i was like yeah. you know what let's do that so i worked as a desk host for a little bit uh, for pubg mobile and then i started getting into other games like fortnite because battle royales are kind of interchangeable it's just small minuscule differences here and there yeah. but you can still work on the, all of them so i was part of the gamers 8 crew for fortnite gamers as 8, a, yeah. yeah so it's uh, season two of gamers 8 uh, for fortnite as a desk host and there was the PUBG Mobile tournament as well that was going on, but I wasn't part of the crew. And I was like, you know what, I still want to hang out with my friends, be there with them. And then uh, I think I met up with one of the people from the Saudi Esports Federation, and they were looking for talent for PUBG PC. Uh -huh. And there was a clash between... Homecoming. Yeah. That's a homecoming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a kind of going back to that, like the first PUBG Mobile ever or PUBG event in yeah. general that I ever worked. Um, so they were looking for casters at the time. But unfortunately, I had like I had other uh, obligations, so I said no. And then they came back to me and said, "Would you like to be a stage host?" I was like, "Wait, stage hosting? That would be insane. That would be sick. Like that. That's the next logical move. Yeah. Yet again, that's the next goal. That's the next dream." So I was like, "Okay." So I worked with them as a stage host, and that was with VSPO. VSPO, Crafton, they loved what I did. They loved my presence on the stage, and through VSPO, I was able to get into MPL Mina uh, in 2023. And again, like they loved my work, they loved my energy, they loved the way I handled myself on the stage. I did it with them again for another season uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And then they told me, how about mid-season cup 2024 at the Esports World Cup? And here we are. Yeah, here we are. So the jump seemed pretty natural again. Nothing was a leap of faith. It was all like, okay, circumstance brought me here. Yeah. And it was all under your control. And that sounds great, Yeah. right? Uh, so with that said, What's the next move from here? Uh, how are you enjoying MSC, right? How, uh, how is it working like with, with all of us? And okay, what's look, the crowd like? Is, is, I would assume this is very different from MPL Mena. Oh yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. I want, first of all, the community is insane. I love this community so far. And I'd have to say like working with, working with this talent has been also a dream come true. Mara specifically, shout out to you. 
massive impact on me over the course of the two weeks. Like she got me to essentially rebrand myself, take a new direction and essentially change what I've been doing on social media. Like she got me to start actually posting on TikTok, which is something that I rarely do, if ever. And I actually hit my first million views video today because of Flap. Very, very much so because of everything happening around yeah, us yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the people that are around you you kind of you kind of learn from the talent that you work with especially with the fact that they're from different communities and stuff yep. like that i always see like any talent that i work with in any game as someone that i a connection i could make a friend that i could make a colleague someone that someone that i could work uh, work with in the future and learn from as well yeah exactly uh so so that's why uh i i'm not so happy to, to hear all of this and uh, to look back at uh, how you started and how we all ended up here together yeah uh, besides that will be besides PUBG mobile besides League of Legends uh, besides Fortnite um, anything else that uh, you, you you F's with you know what I mean like, um, what else, what else uh, do you dabble in uh, I would have loved to be part of like the team fight tactics crew as well mm -hmm. I want to say Apex Legends that's gonna be something coming up as well I'm very excited for that actually it hasn't been announced yet but you know I'm sure but yeah, so like uh, hopefully I'll be part of that as well. Apex Legends has been one of the one of the biggest games for me. It's been because I feel like personally it's one of the best battle royales out there. For sure, yeah, yeah no. Specifically with the tournament format, the fact that you want to be the champion, you have to like reach a certain limit in points, and then you have to win a game. Yeah, it's not just oh six games, most points wins. It's true skill. Yeah, it's very like it has a proper climax to the tournament. It's not anticlimactic where a team can perform for three day, like three games and then it doesn't matter what they do the rest of the three games, they don't what they what they need to. Yeah. So uh, like you have to be consistently good. Just like PUBG, Apex is one of those games that this is never gonna die. Yeah. It should never die. I don't think it will. Like PUBG Mobile, PUBG PC, uh, Apex Legends, League of Legends, Counter-Strike 2, like all these games, they're gonna be around for a very long time, I think. So. Those are the games that you work on. Those yes. are the games that are up and coming for you. Yeah. Uh, in your downtime, what are you? What are you? What are you into? Uh, specifically, I want to say Team Fight Tactics for one main reason. So I live. Uh, I live with uh, a friend of mine back in Dublin, mm -hmm. and I want to say like because there's always stuff that you need to do. I ha like I work out daily. I try to cook as much as I can. I try to clean up as much as I can. I try to just do as much as I can in the apartment. And so a lot of things. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah. So Team Fight Tactics gives me the opportunity to just, I guess, ready my board. Get everything done and then get up, let's say, make a coffee, make some tea, have a snack. Throw uh, some laundry. Do, I was literally going to say, like, yeah. throw some laundry in because, God, there's so much laundry. Always. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, Always. I have to let you know, like, after, I want to say over the past three we, uh, three months, I've worked on a couple of events. And after I finally managed to make it back home, I swear, I was doing laundry for three days straight. There was, like, maybe eight or nine loads of laundry that I had to do. It, yeah, literally, it was, it's ridiculous. And especially in a country like Dublin, where drying takes forever. <laughs> Because it's cold and yes. the world is, it's moist yes. compared to here. Yes, very much so. Well, like, he, dude, here you can wash your clothes, put the shirt outside for like 10 minutes and it's dry. Over there, I have to leave it out for like a day, but then it rains and then I have to wait two more days and then I have to wash it again. My lips are dry <laughs> 10 seconds after I drink water. Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, am I sick? Is my body just that? No, it, it's really just how it is. And Unfortunately, yeah, that's how it is. It's very hot. With, with the, how, do you, how do you live? How do you survive? How do you do that? Because you, I, I would assume at this point, with the rate uh, of, of work you're getting from there and from here, there and here, back and forth, have you got like physically? Have you gotten used to the the, the lack of humidity? Um, I want to say yeah, but I miss the rain. I miss the clouds. I miss being able to walk outside. So you're okay, but mentally you wanna. Yeah. You wanna of be course, home. Of course. Mentally, I wanna be home. I wanna be able to go outside and go for like a five, 10, 15 minute walk without having the fear of, oh God, I'm gonna be just a, a pile of sweat by the end of the day, or like feeling absolutely drained when I'm when I'm done with the walk or Here's something the thing. like that. It's not even the sweat that I'm scared of. I barely sweat here, even if it's really hot out. Well, you're carrying a fan the entire time with you. Don't put me on blast like that. <laughs> it's more of the fact. That everything is so dry, even the inside of my mouth is dry. Yeah. That even if we're around like a very fancy hotel, we're in a state of the art esports facility, we're next to a mall, I still feel like, yo, this is how it was in the olden days, huh? This is the yeah, this is the yeah. desert life. But again, this is just my Southeast Asian body just going, oh. I mean, at no. this point, I would say like my Irish body says, bring back the rain, man. I'm just, again, it's like, I, I am a big fan of putting on a hoodie, putting on some uh, some music and just walking in the rain. That sounds, I like that. That honestly. sounds amazing. I, I wish maybe someday soon, but in the Philippines, it's more just putting on the headphones and walking. That's it. Yeah, like, yeah. No jacket. Don't even. Nothing. All right. To, to wrap up 10 minutes with, um, 
to circle back to MSC 2024. Yeah. Besides Flap, you have a handful of favorite players, a handful of favorite moments you want to share with us? Um, that really stuck with you over the past couple of weeks. Uh, I want to say, for example, like I, I could start with today, for example, SRG, Innocent had an incredible Lord Steel, and I believe in our third game, managed to turn it all around, secure a 3-0. Oh, yeah. The fact that we have a team that has gone undefeated over 100 days, yep. the storyline there is insane. The storyline for, uh, I want to say, Falcons AP Brent as well, finally getting the trophy that they've been missing. Maybe. Yeah, but quite possible. Wait, or while you're watching this video, you will tell us if we're right or wrong but. exactly yeah so like, like their storyline is incredible the storyline for srg is incredible the the fans specifically i want to say one of my favorite moments has got to be when i was on the stage and looking at mara and she's interacting with the crowd and she goes uh pinas lang and then everyone goes yeah. malakas it's just, it's insane i hope i got it right by the way yes yeah so like just seeing that and then the fans going wild i haven't had a proper experience like that Ever, I want to say. Until now. Until now. So, like that to me, that's always going to be a special moment. And I want to thank the community for that. It's just, it's just amazing. And we'll be making more of those moments come the grand finals, which has passed. By the time you watch this, we don't want to, you know, get over uh, the big day tomorrow. So this will be coming out maybe the week after. Okay. So the wood, thank you so much. Of course. The wood thank on. you. Thank you for uh, spending ten minutes plus plus with <laughs> us here. Uh, before I let you go, where can people find you? Where can they find? Your videos on learning Tagalog words. Oh, God, yes. So, first of all, it's on TikTok, Instagram. I rebranded thanks to Mara. Shout out to you again. Uh, now it's Dawood Sandstorm. Dawood is D A W O U D, in case you were asking for the spelling. And that's about it. And I'll say thank you guys. Follow or don't follow. I appreciate you guys, anyways. You guys already gave me unforgivable moments uh, at the tournament. And hopefully, we'll continue to see you guys in the future. And thank you, uh, of course, for this uh, opportunity to kind of interact with yourself and interact with the community. Shukran. Afwan, Habibi. Okay, teach me a word. Like it's your turn be, be, to end the video. Teach me a word. Um, a good word. A good <laughs> in Arabic. Uh, I want to say you already know, like salam alaikum, walaikum salam. Yeah, kabir. Uh, kabir. Uh, kawi. Kawi. Oh, you already know a few words. The other words. Yeah. Yeah. We don't talk about the other words yeah. though. Uh, okay, I can teach you like a simple curse okay. word. That's oh. not too bad. Okay. How about that? Like it's like it's a funny curse word. Yes. Okay. For example, you can say Yunus. Hayawan, you can say that. No. <laughs> He's like, no. Hayawan? Yes, Hayawan is like animal. That's Giannis, it. Giannis, Hayawan. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, it's all right. It's not, it's not too bad. I am not Hayawan. <laughs> you are Hayawan. He is coming to his defense. You are, no. you are, you are Hayawan Kbir. Hayawan Kbir? Hayawan Kawi. Hayawan Kawi. It's my birthday. Come it's on. his birthday. Okay, it's his birthday. Happy birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. What? <laughs>